Welcome everyone to, uh, I'm sorry, welcome everyone to Yes Prep Virtual College Fair. We're excited to have you participating today. We have some fantastic schools here with us. My name is Greg and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can communicate with them with the Q&A button that you see at the bottom of your screen. You can type any questions you have for a specific college or university or any general questions. This is one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check the schedule often and sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash yes prep. And I'll drop that address into the chat. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Catholic University of America. Perfect, thank you. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for taking some time out of um, your mornings. My name is Kevin Medina. I am the Assistant Dean of Undergraduate Admission here at Catholic University, right in our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. Uh, and we like to say that this is the first step for you to write your story. So a little bit about Catholic U by the numbers. Um, we are a smaller university. We have about 3,100 undergraduate students. About 80% of our students do identify as Catholic. That being said, you do not have to be Catholic to attend the university. We are welcoming of all faiths, backgrounds, race, ethnicities, um, with students coming from all over the country and about 33 different um, other countries spanning the entire globe. Uh, our average class size tends to, tends to be right around 19 students, so we do try and keep everything relatively small. We were founded as a research institution with 34 research centers on campus. Um, as, and as I mentioned, we are in the nation's capital. We are actually the largest self-contained campus in the city. So we um, have, a, we sit on 176 acres of green land. And basically what self-contained means is that uh, we are in a bubble. All of our academic buildings, dorms, athletic fields, performing arts centers are right on that campus. Um, so you get a very, very traditional college campus environment while still being in a major city. And we are a product of, you know, living in the nation's capital here in Washington, DC. Um, as I mentioned, we are entirely self-contained, but we have everything that DC has to offer. The way that I typically describe it to students is that we are a metropolitan campus, but only when they want it to be. You really get the best of both worlds where you have everything that um, Washington DC will have to offer for the monuments and the internships and the events that are going on. But we also have our, a metro stop directly on our campus. So we're just four stops away from center city. So it really is the best of both worlds and whatever balance that you would like. You can have that fast paced city lifestyle every day, every weekend, but our students don't have to be surrounded by it 24 seven. And your life at Catholic isn't just gonna be, you know, within the classroom. Um, we have over a hundred different clubs and organizations. Typically in any given week, we are hosting about 40 to 50 events on campus. We are a very, very active campus with 25 NCAA Division III athletic teams and a wide variety of other athletic opportunities, including club sports, intramurals, and two fitness centers for our students to enjoy and utilize. And here at Catholic University, every single student is going to have a minimum of two advisors. Being again that we are in Washington, DC, you basically walk out your door and you're gonna be greeted with some sort of internship opportunity. You can see just a list of a few of our most popular um, ones here that students are, are consistently working with, things like NASA, the Kennedy Center, the Smithsonian Institutions, um, Disney, the White House working on Capitol Hill. Um, but again, this is just a few of our many internships within our network, um, just right here in the city. And at the undergraduate level, we do have nine schools of study. Um, you can basically mix and match any of these different programs. So for a student that applies, all of our programs are direct entry. This is including our nursing program, um, our engineering program. All these are going to be direct entry programs. We do also have three different undecided majors, one in our School of Arts and Sciences, which is a general undecided, as well as an undecided business and an undecided engineering for students who are like, I know I want business, I know I want engineering, but I'm not exactly sure what type of business or, or what you know concentration within engineering. But again, all of our programs are direct entry. So as long as you put the program that you are interested in and applying for, 
you will be put right into that program from day one. And as I mentioned, um, for the most part, all of our programs are kind of a, a mix and match. So you can be a student in the School of Arts and Sciences and then pick up a minor or a double major in almost any of the other programs um, that we do offer. Um, in total, we have about 79 undergraduate degree programs, over 60 different minors and certificates, and four pre-professional programs, including pre-law, pre-dental, pre-vet, and pre-med. And so in terms of our application review process, here are just a few of the components that go into our process. Um, we go through and we recalculate every single transcript that comes into our office. We're also gonna be looking at your strength of curriculum, so the courses you took, throughout your four years of high school. Um, we are a test blind institution, so we do not look at test scores whatsoever. So we will not look at your SAT or your ACT for both application review as well as for scholarship review. We will not play, to, play a part in the review process whatsoever, so you do not have to worry about sending those test scores to us whatsoever. And then we will also look at everything outside the classroom. So your activities, your service, your leadership, you will automatically be considered for our honors program. There is no separate application. And our first and our next deadline is November 1st for an early action deadline. So I hope that, you know, if you all are senior, you do choose to apply. We are Common App exclusive and our application is also free to apply. So as I wrap things up, um, similar to our honors program, our, um, you will automatically be considered for our scholarships. There is no separate application for any of our scholarships. Um, last year, they ranged from $15,000 to $32,000 a year. We also do have a parish scholarship for anyone who is a part of a parish, uh, a Catholic parish within the United States, a legacy grant if you've had a parent, grandparent, or sibling that has um, graduated from the university, and a few full tuition scholarships, which we invite students to interview for. But again, no separate application for any of these. You will automatically be considered, and you will find out if you are admitted to the university, you will find out at the same time which scholarships you are receiving. And so just looking at what's next, um, we are hosting visits Monday through Saturday. So obviously, if you are in the Washington, D.C. area, I would encourage you to come visit campus. Uh, we are hosting interviews as well. Um, they're totally optional, but you know, if you want to add something else to your application, um, you can definitely reach out to me. I will put my information in the chat and then follow us on our social media, CUA admission. Instagram definitely tends to be the most popular for all of our students. Um, so thank you. And I will again be passing it on to our next presenter. Thank you very much. We'll now pass it on to Ilan University. Good morning, everyone. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. And then I will start my timer so I can stay on time. Well, good morning, Yes Prep. My name is Kimberly Romero, and I serve as Assistant Director of Admissions for Diversity and Access here at Elon University in North Carolina. We are the home of the Phoenix, and we are a mid-sized private liberal arts institution. To give you a breakdown of what our students are like, they have around 6,300 students to interact with on campus. We've got 46 states represented, with the vast majority of our students coming from out of state and a robust international student population representing 50 countries across the globe. We also have 18% of our students who do identify as students of color, and they all benefit from wonderful support systems here on campus, most premierly our CREED, Center for Race, Ethnicity, and Diversity Education, our Center for Access and Success that houses our great initiatives like the Odyssey Program, a scholarship opportunity that I'll share more about later, and our First Generation Student Support Services, which will help our students who, like myself, might be the first in their family to head off to college. Geographically speaking, we're located centrally here in North Carolina, about 30 minutes from Greensboro, a 45 minute from our state capital in the Raleigh-Durham area, and about an hour and a half from Charlotte, North Carolina. If you are an outdoor person, North Carolina is a wonderful option for your university time. We do have the mountains, just a short drive from campus, and then the coast with some beautiful beaches as well to explore. Locally, our students have access to a free shuttle to get them across to wherever they may need, but they're also welcome to have a vehicle as soon as their first year. Now to give you an idea of our academics, we do boast five undergraduate schools, all making up over 70 majors and minors. Some that I do want to share with you in particular are our newest major in nursing, which we are really excited to be bringing our first nursing cohort onto campus this year. And then we have our fastest growing major, engineering, here on campus. We offer a couple of different pathways there. You can choose a four-year program, 
in engineering or a dual degree five-year program where you spend three here on campus and two at a partner institution like Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, or Notre Dame, further specializing in your engineering desires. Students are able to jump right in. If you are admitted to Elon, you are essentially admitted to all of our programs. And you can also explore the liberal arts curriculum has the beauty of helping you touch across all of these five schools and figuring out what your one passion or two passions for a double major or even up to three minors might be during your time at Elon. Give you an idea of what our students are doing outside of class we do require them to participate in at least two of these five elon experiences leadership research service internship and global study we are very proud to be ranked the number one institution for our global study abroad programs helping our students travel abroad for a whole semester a winter term of three weeks as short as a week for their spring break or even a summer opportunity to get across the globe to wherever they would like to explore this gives them a very strong foundation for when they leave our campus and also helps to shape and inform what their career path may be during their time here on campus Give you an idea of our student life here we do have three different dining halls and over 15 retail locations i always like to brag about our biscuitville on campus if you have not had a chance to try it out we are the only campus in north carolina with a biscuitville right on site it is a wonderful place to get all kinds of biscuits and some great breakfast food we do have eight residential neighborhoods with different themes everything from innovation to sustainability and over 24 living and learning communities where you can share space with students who have similar interests as you we are also a division one athletic school with 17 teams playing in the Colonial Athletic Association, and we boast over 280 student organizations, everything from ballroom dancing to club sports to even the mac and cheese club. So some very interesting things. And I do encourage you to check out those Instagrams you see there below to get in touch with any of these organizations and to check out a little bit more about student life on campus give you an idea of the application process if you are considering applying within this cycle or even in the years ahead. We are on the Common App and the Elon application. We have no preference as to which of the two students used to apply to our institution. We review them both just the same. Our first deadline coming up this year is November 1st for both early action and early decision. The difference there being that early decision is binding and early action gives you a little bit more flexibility of knowing your decision sooner, but still having until May 1 of the incoming year to decide. A regular deadline in case Elon falls on your um, college list a little bit later in the year is January 10th and your decision would be released in March. We do have three factors that we look at very closely during your admission process. The transcript that shows us your academic record, your school report coming directly from your school to give us a better idea of what classes were offered at your high school, the rigor and the size of your senior class, and then the essay, which is one of my personal favorite parts to read. It really helps me get to know you beyond just what your grades might show me or beyond what your extracurriculars might be looking Listed on your application, so certainly give some love and time to your essay. We are a test optional school, so essentially what that means for you is that you do not need to submit any test scores to be admitted to Elon, with the exception of our nursing program. If you have any ACT or SAT test scores and you're maybe wondering if you should submit them, I encourage you to ask yourself if those test scores reflect something that your transcript does not and then if the answer is yes you are more than welcome to submit them but do know that they will not be as heavily of an influence in your admission decision as they may be for other institutions or as they may have been in other years we do recalculate our gpa for our students you can see 3.5 to 4.5 mid-range for when we do recalculate and then we do have some special scholarship programs that i also want to touch on that all have a deadline of january 17. We have four scholarship opportunities, but outside of that, we do have two that all of our applicants are considered for here at Elon. The two that you are automatically considered for are awarded at the time that you receive your admission decision, but these four provide more of a cohort structure experience for your college years. I do want to focus there on the Odyssey program that you see at the bottom. It is a special scholarship that meets full demonstrated need for students who are selected. We have 52 to award this year, so I do encourage you to apply and consider applying to Elon as well well. Our Fellows is a four-year program that lines up with all those majors that you saw a little bit earlier. So if you have a particular career path in mind and you want to major in one of those schools, you're more than welcome to apply to the Fellows. Our Scholars program is for students who have a more specific career path. And then our Accelerated Pathways combines your graduate and undergraduate degree. Most primarily, we have a three plus one program in our School of Business, helping you get your Master's of Business in your fourth year of college. We also have a five-year three plus two Physician's Assistant program in an amazing six year three plus three doctor of physical therapy if that doctor of physical therapy is in your future career plans.
As you can see, those um, accelerated pathways do require that test score as well. So if you're considering applying to those, we do encourage you to submit those test scores as easy as self-report as well throughout your admission process. I do want to end my time with you all by sharing my email. I'm at kromero at elon.edu. If you have any questions coming up, please feel free to reach out. I am more than happy to answer, or you can drop those in the chat and I can share more information there. If you have an opportunity to visit campus, I certainly encourage you to do so, but we have a number of virtual opportunities as well that you can access by scanning that QR code there. I also invite you all next week on Tuesday and Thursday, respectively, we have the Black Advance, which highlights our Black and African American student success on campus. And on Thursday, we have Viva Elon, which highlights our Hispanic and Latinx student success. So I hope to see you there. It's been great meeting with you all. I'll pass it on to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Next up, we'd like to introduce Hawaii Pacific University. Aloha kakayaka, good morning. Uh, my name is Brandon. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Hawaii Pacific University. I am super excited to be here to share with you all the benefits of studying um, not only at a great university, but in beautiful Hawaii. Uh, now that you know a lot about our great university, let's talk about our undergraduate programs. We have programs across five different colleges. Um, you'll likely to find an area that you are interested in here at HPU. Um, all of our programs are very unique in what they offer to our students, but the one thing they have in common is that all of our faculty are at the front of the classroom. You'll be working with our faculty uh, and they will be teaching you, not a teaching assistant or a graduate assistant. Also, we provide our students that opportunity to do more in the classroom and to double major if that's something you're interested in. And for students that wanna take that academic rigor to the next level, we have two very innovative programs that we offer, the residential honors program, as well as our scholars program. And as you can see, these are really built for those that wanna take that rigor to the next level. Uh, both of these programs um, do require a separate application in addition to the HPU application. And as you can see, you can access those applications at hpu.edu slash honors and hpu.edu slash scholars. And the priority deadline is December 1st. So if you know you want to participate in these programs, you know you want to apply, definitely apply early. We do accept on a space availability basis um, after December 1st. And here is a listing of all of our scholarships. We offer ample scholarships here at HPU, the first of which uh, you are automatically considered. So for academic merit, we base it upon your cumulative grade point average. Um, so we take your GPA and we calculate that merit. So the better you do in high school, the more merit um, you will receive. We also offer various talent-based scholarships, as you see. Um, and these are great opportunities for you to highlight your talents that may not be able to list, be listed on your transcript. And these do require a separate application at hp.edu slash talent. And our athletic scholarships are offered to students that are recruited to play on any one of our NCAA Division II sports teams. And here's a list of all of our admission requirements. What does it take? to apply to HP, well, we do require an application. Um, we have our, both our institutional application as well as the common application. 
Um, we do have an application fee there, $45. We um, take a look at your transcripts, your high school transcripts. Um, if you've done any dual credit uh, while in high school, you want to send those over to us as well. And if you've done um, um, any, any other coursework, um, you'll want to send us those transcripts. We are test optional, so we do not require that you submit those test scores in, in order to be eligible for admission to HPU. And the personal statement and recommendation letter are optional. But we really want to get to know you more as a person. We operate using a holistic review. So we really uh, look forward to seeing those documents and to get to know you better throughout this process. And here are our costs uh, for 2021, 2022. Our tuition is currently set at 29520 um, We have room and board that ranges from $14,000 to $20,000. We are a private nonprofit university. So we have one flat tuition rate for all students that attend HPU. And our room and board um, rooming um, on campus and living on campus is not required, uh, but you can certainly do so. And it's highly recommended for students um, off island. And 91% of our students do receive some form of federal and or institutional aid. So a lot of financial aid opportunities available to you. Um, and here's a listing of our important uh, dates. Um, as you can see, our early action deadline is November 15th. Um, and if you apply by November 15th, you'll hear back by December 31st of this year. And again, early action is non-binding, uh, but it's a way for you to hear back a little bit sooner so you have a lot of time to plan. Uh, and of course, we're having a preview day, virtual preview day on November 13th, a Saturday. So I hope you'll join us. More information I'll place in the chat for you all. And here's the contact information for my colleague, Susie Prenovo. Um, she works with all of our lovely students from the great state of Texas. So she's available. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm also available as well. Any of the admissions counselors here at HPU are more than happy to help. Um, I like to extend a big mahalo, a big thank you to you all, and I'd love to pass it on to my colleagues. Thank you, Hawaii Pacific University. We'd now like to invite Pacific University of Oregon. All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Chandler Patterson, and I am one of the assistant directors here in our Office of Admissions at Pacific University, Oregon. Thanks so much for being with us today. Um, so Pacific University is located in Forest Grove, Oregon, which is about 30 minutes west of downtown Portland. So I know we've kind of been um, from coast to coast here this morning, so we're, we're going to Oregon today. Um, so Forest Grove is about an hour from the Oregon coast and right next to the Tillamook Forest. So really beautiful opportunities for hiking. Um, you can actually surf along the Oregon coast. It is a little bit chilly. Um, and then we're about two hours from Mount Hood. So really great for skiing and snowboarding. Lots of really awesome outdoor adventures for students right off campus. Um, and then we're also located about 15 minutes from what we call the Silicon Forest. So essentially there are a lot of um, large organizations as well as local businesses that students will choose to um, pursue internship opportunities with um, right here in kind of the Hillsboro Beaverton area just outside Forest Grove as well as in the city of Portland. Um, Nike's world headquarters and five different Intel campuses just to name a few. We have over 65 different majors, minors, and pre-professional tracks here at Pacific. A um, couple of the ones that um, students will often come to Pacific for are definitely those health professions programs. So we have graduate level programs in physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, optometry, just to name a few. So um, students will often come kind of with that pathway in mind and join what's called our Advantage Scholars Program. Other things that I think we do really well include the College of Business, College of Education, as well as our arts. So we have performing arts, music, dance, theater, we have film, media arts, um, and then of course, uh, social sciences and humanities. <clears throat> Um, students don't have to declare their major until the end of their sophomore year here at Pacific, so there's a lot of opportunity for exploration, kind of trying new things um, before making that decision. 
our undergraduate student body is right around 1900 undergraduate students. So you're gonna have a really small, close knit campus community here at Pacific. Um, our under, or, I'm sorry, our graduate student population is right around 2000, um, but majority of those students actually take courses um, on campuses, on other campuses throughout the state of Oregon. Um, and so with that, 100% of our classes are taught by the professors themselves. So you're gonna be learning from the experts in the field in your classes, um, in these kind of small, close knit class sites. So average class size is about 19 students. Um, our largest lecture halls on campus seat about 60 to 75, where you might have some of your introductory level courses in your first, uh, first and second years. Um, and then as you kind of move into that junior and senior year, um, the class sizes will just continue to get smaller. And it's common for students to, or it's common for students to have at least one class that's um, only about five students. So sometimes they'll choose to take that class to a local cafe instead of um, in the traditional classroom setting. These small class sizes and having the professors teach the courses themselves really um, lends itself to strong relationship building in our classroom. So um, both students and uh, faculty really want to support one another and ensure that, um, you know, the professors want to ensure you're getting connected with the opportunities that you are looking for, whether that's research or internships, um, and ensure that you're getting set up for your next step after Pacific. We have a four year graduation guarantee, which is really exciting. So even if you are kind of exploring in those first two years, we still guarantee that by working with our academic advisors, you will finish your bachelor's degree in four years. We wanna ensure that we're saving you time and money in the long run and helping you move on to whatever that next step is for you. We're the top private research university in the Pacific Northwest and top eight along the West Coast. So essentially the National Science Foundation looks at how much funding is being allocated to um, undergraduate students uh, for different research opportunities. Um, and you can start this as early as your freshman year. This research doesn't necessarily have to be typical in a lab under a microscope. While it might be, um, there are a variety of research opportunities in other areas. Um, we have an early learning center on campus so students can do um, educational research within, within that early learning center. Um, students can engage in social science research in the city of Portland. So really a variety of uh, projects going on all across campus. Our students are really busy um, while they're focused in the classroom. They're also really busy outside the classroom too. Um, it's common for students to do three to five different things outside the classroom, whether that's a job, a sport, a club, we have over 70 different student clubs and organizations, our largest being the Hawaii Club that puts on the largest, largest student-run luau on the mainland each year. Um, we also have a variety of performing arts groups, music, dance, theater, and we have 24 um, NCAA Division III varsity sports, as well as some intramural and club sports as well. So lots for students to get involved in outside of their uh, major. We also love when students kind of take what they're learning inside the classroom and apply that outside. Um, we have over 35 different study abroad sites in countries around the world now. Um, and so these range from one semester to two semesters. You can even do a travel course um, during winter term. Um, and some of these actually go to Hawaii, which, would, which I would love to go to Hawaii in January. Um, we have a variety of um, outdoor programs as well. So I mentioned kind of those different outdoor adventures. You can participate in those with our Outdoor Pursuits office. Um, they'll actually provide the gear and teach you what you need to know to go backpacking, kayaking, hiking, surfing, stand up paddle boarding, um, what have you. There are a couple different scholarships I want to be sure you know about as we leave here today. Um, the first being that academic merit scholarship, you'll be automatically considered for these when you apply to Pacific. These range from fifteen to twenty-seven thousand dollars per year for all four years, and this is based on your full academic profile, so GPA, courses, um, letter of recommendation, and essay. We are test optional. You can still earn the highest merit scholarship without test scores, but if you feel um, you know, that you want to share those test scores with us, we'll definitely um, take a look at those. And then we have senior preview scholarship days all throughout the fall. Um, these are both in-person and online. And just by attending this event, you'll actually earn a $1,000 scholarship per year for all four years. So we'd love to see you at one of our senior preview scholarship days. Here's my contact information. I'll also put it in the chat for you. Feel free to reach out with any questions that you have, and we'd love to have you on campus sometime. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pacific University of Oregon. Next up, we'd like Wake Forest University to present. Thank you. Better unmute myself. There we go. Hi, thanks so much. 
Um, I'm going to give you a very brief introduction into everything that Wake Forest has to offer. Um, so let's get started. Uh, Wake Forest University is a small-ish liberal arts school in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We have about 5,300 undergraduate students, um, and those students come from 49 states and over 50 countries around the world. About one-fifth of our student population comes from North Carolina, and about one-third of our population comes from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds. Uh, Wake Forest is very much a liberal arts university. Uh, we have over 60 departments on campus offering almost 50 majors. Um, the average class size for students at Wake is going to be about 24 students. So your intro classes will be a little bit larger, maybe more like 25 to 28 students. And your non-intro classes actually average out to fewer than 20 students. Um, our student faculty ratio is 11 to 1. And those two facts together really just mean that your professors are going to know you during your time on campus, and you're going to know them as well. Um, we do have a liberal arts curriculum. As you can see, the divisions right here, there are five sections within our uh, academic offerings, and we require students to take classes within each division as a, part of the liberal, uh, as a part of our liberal arts education, but we don't have required classes. And so you uh, you have to spread out and try all of the things that we offer, but you are allowed to choose courses in whatever departments are interesting to you. Um, the liberal arts is the broad aspect of our education, but of course, faculty-directed research is the depth within our education. Um, every professor who teaches undergraduate classes at Wake is also required to be doing undergraduate research with students. And so about uh, half of our students do faculty directed research before they graduate. And about one in three Wake Forest students is actually published for their research before they graduate from their undergraduate years here on campus. Another big popular central part of our um, academic offerings at Wake Forest, of course, is study abroad. Study abroad is super popular on campus. We're one of the top five private universities in the United States in terms of the percentage of our students that study abroad. More than four-fifths of Wake students will choose to study abroad at least once during their time on campus. Um, we offer 400 programs in 200 cities in 70 countries around the world, um, and so the world is very much your oyster in this regard. You have so many choices uh, in terms of study abroad. We actually own three permanent properties in Europe in Venice, Vienna, and London uh, to house permanent study abroad locations as well. Um, those are some of our most popular options for students. And Wake offers study abroad for summers, semesters, and for full years during your time on campus. Um, it's of course you know, worth knowing that if you're not studying abroad, Wake does have a very campus-centric uh, experience. We require students to live on campus for three years and guarantee housing for all four years. And so only seniors are allowed to live off campus. And about 65% of our seniors choose to live on campus. And so in any given year, something like seven eighths of our student body is going to choose to live on campus. Um, and that's because there is just so much going on in the center of campus that most students prefer to continue to live around that community community as much as possible. Uh, in terms of student life uh, and living on campus at Wake, there are actually almost 270 active student organizations this year. They run the gamut across everything you could possibly imagine. Um, of course, you can see here we have a thriving arts community. Wake actually has a student-led arts performance every three days for the entire calendar year. Uh, and so there is a, a huge variety of things to get involved with. Um, the basic line I usually say is whatever you're looking to get involved with in your free time, it's more than likely that there's already a student organization uh, that you could join uh, upon arriving on campus. And if by some stretch of the imagination you are doing something unusual or outlandish enough with your free time, it takes one friend and one faculty member to start your own club on campus at Wake Forest as well. Um, it's worth knowing that another pretty central part of our you know, campus experience living at Wake is, of course, that we are an ACC school. And so we do have those major conference athletics. Wake is actually the smallest university in a Power Five conference in the United States. And so we have this unique perk where uh, we do have these huge ACC sports, but students are actually guaranteed attendance to regular season games without a ticket. Uh, you just show your student ID at the door and you're allowed into any of those uh, you know, sports on campus. So we have the, the big football games and basketball games, of course, in the fall, um, and baseball games in the spring, and then um, golf, tennis, volleyball, all of the typical sports that you'd imagine, um, and students are able to attend any of those games during the regular season without a ticket, and so uh, that ends up being a pretty central part of the campus experience here at Wake. The last thing I'll very quickly talk about in terms of introducing you all to Wake Forest um, is I'm going to briefly introduce our motto. Our motto at Wake Forest is pro-humanitate. Pro-humanitate means for humanity. 
Um, I like to think of our motto as not so much a slogan or a catchphrase, but rather as a challenge or a directive for our university. It's a way uh, to give our campus purpose. And so some of our most popular events each year, some of the most popular student organizations, such as our campus garden or the volunteer service corps, um, those are some of the central activities that students get involved with uh, to stay active, but also to give back to our community uh, through their time here on campus at Wake Forest. Now, uh, finally, I know I didn't touch very much on the application process here today. In six minutes, I like to think that my goal is to get you interested in Wake Forest rather than to give you every piece of information possible about our university. And so um, I'll very quickly say that Wake Forest is test optional. We've been test optional since 2008, so that's entirely up to you. Um, we do offer interviews as a part of our application process. You can request an interview this year as soon as you've submitted your application. Um, and our application is full of some short answer questions and some creative questions, and that should give you the opportunity opportunity to, to tell us all about yourself. Um, we do require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile as a part of your application for need-based aid. Um, and in order to be considered for merit-based aid at Wake, there is no separate or um, distinct application for merit aid. You simply need to submit your application by November 15th. Um, we do live presentations on Thursdays and uh, Saturday afternoons. Uh, and so please check our website uh, to, to sign up for some live information sessions through our website if you'd like to learn more about Wake Forest. Um, as I finish, I will also include my uh, email address in the chat uh, for everyone. So thank you for your time and I'll turn it over back to our uh, presenter. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Wake Forest University. And last, we'd like to invite Bangor University to present. Thank you very much. And a very good afternoon from North Wales in the United Kingdom. I hope my screen is now come across to everybody. And I shall just show a video to you of North Wales. Hi everyone, it's Peter here, one of your regional managers from Bangor University. We've got a bit of a video for you today looking at Bangor and North Wales. I hope you enjoy it. If you've got any questions, just give me a shout. So I did want to take you from Bangor up into the mountains of the Snowdonia National Park, which at its closest point is only two and a half miles away. However, because of coronavirus, we're trying to do our part to help keep Wales safe by minimizing non-essential travel. So what that means is you're going to see videos a bit like this that we pre-recorded when we could travel. Um, they'd be a little bit cheesy sometimes because they're using phones and perhaps a little bit uh, amateurish. But where you do see some of the professional footage recorded by the university before, please rest assured this is before social distancing and coronavirus. So if you like your history, Bangor has so much to offer. Founded in 1884, the university itself has loads of history inside it, such as the amazing buildings you're seeing now and the Welsh Library that you've just seen. Now if that wasn't good enough, the local area has more history than you can shake a stick at. So my personal favourite is Bomaris Castle like you're seeing now, but around Bangor we have even more. So from Bangor, we've got three UNESCO World Heritage Site castles, less than 30 minutes away by public transport. So right from Bangor, the closest one, as the crow flies, is Bomaris Castle, which is my favourite castle, and one of the castles you saw earlier. Then if we go down from Bangor, down the coast, we go to Carnarvon Castle, which is probably one of the most impressive castles you will see. Really cool, restored during Victorian times, and it's where the Prince of Wales was crowned in the 1960s. And then if we go along the coast to Conwy, We've got Conway Castle, which is probably the easiest castle you can get to because there's a station right next to it and the train actually pulls into the castle walls. And if that wasn't enough, around Bangor we've got so much more, from ancient burial chambers to old slate mines. Where better to study history than in the place itself? So the main reason we go to school is to get an education. And all the really cool stuff that you see around Bangor is kind of like the icing on the cake to complement a gold standard education. And at Bangor, our teaching is rated gold under the UK government's TEF framework, which is kind of like the ultimate mark of quality for university education in the UK. And if that's not good enough, we're a Fulbright school as well. So when I did my masters, I wanted to be in the place that I was studying. And at Bangor, so much of what you study is all around you. 
And on a field trip like this, that means there's less time on a bus and more time studying the subject you love. Now, the most important thing about a university is the people inside it. And at Bangor, we have some amazing academics doing some really cool research. And no matter what level you're studying at, there's an ability to see that research firsthand. And that gold standard teaching is going to help you reach the next level. And our students love this teaching. And in 2020, The Guardian put Bangor in the top 10 in the UK for teaching satisfaction. And if that's not cool enough, we have a natural history museum, a research vessel, and a botanical garden. So the stunning natural beauty that we have around Bangor is what makes us really special. One of the amazing things about being an international student at Bangor University is this amazing landscape behind me you can explore for free with our clubs and societies. You can join the mountain walking club and then you'll get to go up there. Now talking about the stunning natural beauty that's around Bangor just doesn't feel like it does it justice because it's so amazing. And you don't just have to take my word for it either. Just go online and Google North Wales and you'll see some of the amazing reviews and blogs that people have done about how North Wales is a phenomenal place to visit. Even Many clubs and societies that can help you do that. Clubs and societies that we consistently get rave reviews about. In 2019, the What Uni Student Choice Awards said that Bangor was the best in the UK for clubs and societies. And with over 200 to choose from, it's not just about climbing mountains, it's about unleashing your creativity and most importantly, having fun. So, gold standard education and loads of fun. But now on to a really important question. Well, I often get asked by international students, is it true it always rains in Wales? Well, I think by the blue sky behind me, you can see it's not true. It doesn't always rain in Wales, otherwise I'd be soaking wet. So, I hope you enjoyed that short video and I hope you liked what you see. And if you want to find out more, just get in touch with me. Drop me an email, give me a shout, I'd love to hear from you. Because I can tell you how you can experience Bang University. Uh, thank you everyone for that and sorry about the uh, the connection issues with my, my my sort of video there but if you do have any questions and do want to find out if Bangor University could be the right school for you um, then please do drop me a, an email my email address is here you can also drop me a text on my cell phone number as well so thank you very much for your time and uh, thanks to, to everyone at Yes Prep for arranging this Well, our time is just about done today. Thank you everyone for presenting. And thanks for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find a recording of this session as well as all of the sessions recordings, remember, at strivescan.com backslash yesprep. Thanks again to all of our presenters and have a wonderful day.